Jesus came back in my life, and well, here I was. And Jesus said, okay, we're finished with your judgment. It's now time for the summary. I said, yes, Jesus. And he said, Daniel, Scott, Matthewson. Now, when he said this, everyone in the whole stadium could hear. And so now, everyone was going to hear the summary of my judgment. And I said, yes, Jesus. He said, Daniel, you were given financial resources beyond most people's wildest dreams. You may not know this, you might not have been aware of this, but you were in the top 1% of wealth of all of human history. I had no idea. Yeah, you were. Wow. You squandered a majority of it on yourself. You hardly gave anything for my kingdom purposes. And as a result, you sent very little treasure ahead. And you have very little to celebrate here at the Bema regarding your financial stewardship. Yes, Jesus. He said, Daniel, you were given the spiritual gift of teaching. You never taught anyone. You were given the spiritual gift of encouragement. You rarely encouraged anyone unless it was self-serving encouragement. Daniel, as I look at your life, I must say it's mostly worthless. And I thought to myself, ha, is there anything worse to hear from your Savior? He said, Daniel, yeah, you had your moments where you had some kind of kingdom impact, but they were so few and far between. The majority of your life was worthless. Just when I thought, I couldn't hear anything worse. He said these words. He said, Daniel, the summary of your judgment is this. You left your first love. I fell to my knees. I, I, I could barely breathe. I, I thought to myself, I'll never be able to get up again. I mean, it was true. It was completely true. I, I trusted him for salvation, and then I treated him like he was a pet on the leash. I mean, I'd pull him close when I needed him or when I was excited about him, but then I'd throw him in the backseat of my, oh, so impressive life. It was completely true. And then Jesus said, the, the most compassionate, grace-filled words ever spoken to a human. He said, Daniel, you left your first love, but your first love never left you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He said, Daniel, there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ. And I thought, yes. He's not going to condemn me. The old is past. The, the new has come, Daniel. It's going to get a lot better from this. There were tears running down my cheeks, which confused me a bit. Because I always thought that there'd be no crying in heaven. Uh, but then I remembered what those passages in Revelation actually said. He will wipe away every tear from his eyes. 
Well, here are my tears. Tears of regret, of shame, of disappointment. And Jesus did it for me. He, he got up off his throne and he walked down to me and he wiped away the tears from my eyes. And I never cried again. Never. He picked me up by my hands and he, he went around behind me and he said, Daniel, Scott, Matthewson, be glorified. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, I was glorified. And when I was, everything that had been burned in my life was completely and forever removed from my memory. And all I had left was my relationship with Jesus and the treasures that were there, there for all eternity. And I thought, oh, this is more than enough. And I flew back to my seat under my own power. And when I did, I looked down and I saw my wife and my kids and I waved down to them and they were pointing at me and my kids were doing this and going, that's my dad! And as I got back to my seat, everyone in my section was patting me on the back and saying, way to go, Daniel. And I thought, oh, this is heaven. I love it. And I get to stay here forever. Oh. The judgments, they continued and continued and continued and continued until finally the last one was complete. And when the last judgment was complete, my friend, Indira Yenseki, the man who was sitting next to me, the man from Japan, he stood to his feet and he had all four of his crowns, two on each arm like this, and he flew down to the platform and he fell on his face before Jesus and he threw his crowns at Jesus' feet. And when he did, there were people got up from all over the stadium and they flew down and threw their crowns at the feet of Jesus. And I stood up from my seat and I reached to my head. And I didn't have one. And I thought, ah, oh, if I could go back, if I could do it again, I'd get me a crown so that I could participate in the ultimate act of worship, throwing my crown at the feet of my Savior, at the feet of my King. But whether we had a crown or not, we could all offer up a sacrifice of praise, a song of praise to our King. And so all around the stadium we stood and we sang about throwing our crowns at the feet of Jesus and giving our lives fully to him and we stood as we sang